ask a teacher assistant for one of these instruction sheets. Next, the instructor will issue you a board of cedar. Cedar is the best wood for outdoor uses because it is resistant to water and insects. The next tools you'll need are tri-squares. Here's a tri-square. It looks like a metal L-shaped ruler. You can find these at the tool station. Next, you're gonna use your instruction sheet and mark the measurements for each piece of the birdhouse using a pencil. Only use a pencil on your wood. Never use a pen or ink. Use the tri-square. Line the wooden end up against the edge of the board and you'll have a nice straight square line. When your pieces are marked out, you'll notice that the two side pieces are different because they're separated by a diagonal line. You'll see you'll do this by having 9 and a fourth inches on one side and 10 and a fourth inches on the other side, like this. You see how one side is longer than the other? That way you'll have a diagonal line right here. Make sure you measure that out correctly. Check, check your instruction sheet carefully. The long side will be 10 and a quarter inches and the short side 9 and a quarter inches. The next tool you need to use is the wood vise. There are several wood vices about the workshop. A few of them might not work, but most of them do. The wood vise is a very use, useful tool. When it's loosened by turning the handle all the way to the left, you can pull the wood vise out and push it in. But as soon as you turn the handle to the right and start to tighten it, like so, you will no longer be able to push the vise in and out. So, go ahead and loosen a vise and pull it out to the same width as your board. Place your cedar board in the vise and then push it closed. Then turn the handle to the right until it's nice and tight. You want to put the first pencil line you're going to cut, or what we call the cut line, you want to put it just a few inches away from the teeth of the vise, from the jaws of the vise. Just a few inches, no, long, no farther away than that. Because if you put it too far away, like way out here, your board's going to bounce up and down like a diving board, and that's not good. Now it's time to select the back saw for sawing your pieces out. Find where the back saws are stored, and select one. They look like this. Keep your hand away from the saw line or the cut line and move in a steady back and forth rhythm. Once your pieces are cut out, you can store them in your shop locker. Here's a floor. The next step is to sand your pieces smooth. You only want to sand in the direction of the grain lines and you only want to sand the edges and the outside the surface. And as you can see, it really doesn't take as long as you think. You'll find it helpful to use a sanding block. These are stored over at the tool station and you do not need a checkout card for them. They're black rubber semicircular blocks and you can insert any sheet of sandpaper into them that you wish. It'll help keep your hand from tiring out as fast and they're good for sanding flat surfaces. Remember, you only need to sand the surfaces that are going to be seen, which means the outside of the birdhouse. Also the edges, of course. You don't need to sand the inside of the birdhouse because the birds will prefer the wood to be rough, like, a, like the inside of a natural tree. Here's an effective way to sand the edges of your wood. Also notice that the corners of the floor have been shaved off. You'll need to do that too. If you feel confident using the power sanders, you can use a power sander to shave the corners off the floor. You could also use a sanding block and do it by hand. Step four, marking the nail hole locations. With step four, we're gonna mark the hole locations. Start off by asking your instructor for a good sample birdhouse.
This next step can be difficult. It's a bit of a balancing act. You need to set your house up as if it were finished, but without nails. So you're going to put your back face down on the bench, then balance the two side pieces on top of the back. Make sure you have a quarter of an inch difference in height at the top. The two sides should be a quarter of an inch shorter than the back. Then rest your front piece on it and make sure the front piece is a quarter of an inch taller than the sides as well. So you see, you have a quarter of an inch gap on both sides. Rest the roof across and then you should have a quarter inch air vent along the top of both sides right here. Make sure it's nice and even and not too big and not too small. This will allow the heat to escape on hot days. Last, you can put the floor in or not. It's optional. Once all of your pieces are lean, leaning together and it looks like a finished birdhouse, you're going to take a pencil and take the sample birdhouse that your instructor gave to you and look at the example house and look at every place that you see a nail or a drilled hole. Every place that you see a nail or a hole, you're going to make a small X on your house with a pencil. And that X is where you're going to put nails. So you need five small X's on your front piece, like so. After you've marked the front, turn the house over and put one X on the side. You'll notice there should not be a nail hole on the side that opens. One side of your house is going to swing open like a swinging door. This one nail on the side is to hold the floor on. So trace down with your pencil where the floor is and make a little X. Also, you're going to need nail holes on the back side. Make a little mark on the edge of the back like this. And that's where you'll need a, a nail through the back. Next, we've got to flip the example over and look at the back. You'll see there is probably about four nail holes in the back. You have two on the non-swinging side, like there. And you have one on the swinging door side. And you'll have one to hold the floor onto the back. So that's a total of four nail holes. Last, we need to mark the nail holes in the roof. Now, you'll need to make sure that the nail goes into the middle of that piece of wood, right into the front. So you're going to trace along with your eyes. Make sure that the nail hole is going to go straight through the roof and into the center of the piece below it. You should have a total of three nails going through the roof. Two in the back here and one towards the front. Now that we're done marking most of the holes, you can take your pieces apart so that you can access the back. Find the marks on the edge of the back that you made earlier and make a little X. That's where the nails will go into your back piece. You want your X's to be close to the edge of the board but not too close. Because remember, a nail is going to go through these holes. The last thing you'll drill is the entrance hole. The entrance hole for the blue the bluebird should be one and a half inches wide and it should be six and a half inches up from the bottom of your front piece. Six and a half inches. So get a ruler or a tri square and measure that. When you've found the center of the board, find the center of the board and along the center line measure up six and a half inches. Then place a large X.
your safety goggles. The size drill bit you'll use to drill the nail holes is an eighth inch drill bit. It looks like this. So make sure you have the right size drill bit loaded into the drill press before you begin. Eighth inch. The one and a half inch drill bit is for the entrance hole. Remember that's too big to fit through the metal hole, the hole on the metal table. So you need to put a piece of scrap wood underneath your wood first. Now, you chisel. Make sure you chisel lightly so it doesn't end up like this. Stop! You're supposed to chisel so the birds have a place to grip on the way into their bird.